Today we're going to talk about Dryden Design's uh, luxury fountain pens. So I have two of them. They're um, the same pen but two different models in terms of one's uh, silver and gold. Ooh, I guessed right. Uh, so silver and gold with black on it. It's a nice one. And then the second one, which is again the same price, same model, just a different color, is black and gold. So you can kind of see the two from Dryden Designs. Um, they write exactly the same, the nibs are the same, everything else is the same, obviously just two different models for you to look at, whether you like silver or black. I myself prefer the black one in this specific brand, only because it doesn't show fingerprints, which the silver does, and I just think it looks a little better against the gold. I'm not a big silver gold fan, although I do like the black um, offsets. A couple of things about um, this model before we move on. I find it interesting that Dryden Designs also has another pen, which I'll review soon, um, but they don't have different model names. They're all just called luxury fountain pens, but what's really cool about the one in the gift box that's a slightly higher price, well, two things. It comes with a ballpoint, but it also has a hooded nib, so you'll have to look at the next um, review for that. I haven't reviewed a hooded nib in probably over a year. They're just, people just don't make them as often anymore, I guess. I don't know why I don't get sent a lot of those for review. So anyway, Dryden, Dryden Designs Luxury Fountain Pen, um, your choice of colors there. A couple things, uh, clip I am not a fan of uh, design-wise. It's just a very plain clip, as you can see. You'll see that it's um, just plain and it has kind of this little Y shape on it and it looks stamped out. There's a little ball um, that separates the clip from the pen and it's just very just plain. It doesn't do anything for the pen in my opinion other than keep it from rolling off the table. One of the things I really do like is the Dryden um, logo engraved in the cap band there. I really think it's very classy. I like the touch. Um, both of the pens are the same in that they have a ball. It's a little raised ball on the cap and a raised ball on the blind cap um, for each of them on the other side. Which is, this one's like it protrudes really high. I'm not really sure um, about that, but it, hey, I guess it works. <laughs> um, one thing that I thought was interesting or somewhat unique and kind of weird is that these are pull-off caps, which is great. I love a pull-off cap, but listen, you can hear it click. Definitely a pull-off, right? But it's threaded on the inside. And I think that's just for aesthetics because there's no threading, and you can't see this, but there's no threading on the inside of the cap. So it is literally a pull-on, pull-off cap. But I guess rather than just have one single step down, they decided to make it look a little bit more fancy, possibly, and have the threads on the inside. I just thought that was an, a weird touch because it's, you know, not functional. <laughs> Those threads are absolutely, I, I can't figure out a reason for them at all other than just looks when you're holding it. It does make the pen look a little bit more expensive, but again, there are no threads in the inner cap, so there's nothing for it to thread to. Um, one of the things that I don't love about this pen is that it doesn't post well, like on the back. So you can get it to post by just mashing it down. Actually, black one, not so much. I hadn't tried posting the black one. Silver one, I can. <laughs> so silver one you can, but it, it rattles off. And if I were to really like jam this or, you know, kind of fling it, the cap would fall off because it wriggles off over time. Um, I don't know why that is, why one posts and the other doesn't. Now it's gonna bother me. I guess that one is just a little bit, yeah, it's not at all sitting there. It won't, the inner cap is too thick and it won't um, bite on the back of the pen. And my guess is the lacquer coating on the black makes it just ever so slightly one millimeter thicker so it won't sit there. I love to be able to post my caps on the back um, just so I don't lose them and so they're always on the pen. And I don't know, I just like the feeling of writing with the cap on the back. You can't really do that with these pens because they want to wriggle off. Um, one of the things about the Dryden Designs pen, which I've already inked both of these and used both of them for writing quite a bit, is that they have the same um, kind of, I guess, white label brand nib. It just says Genius Iridium for Iridium Tip. That's what the um, all fountain pens have, like a little Iridium Tip where you write with it. Um, but the nib themselves are not proprietary to Dryden Designs. Uh, a bunch of the less expensive fountain pens use this type of nib where it says Genius, it's stamped in the front and then it'll say Iridium at the bottom. Um, it doesn't mean it's a bad nib. It's actually a very reliable 
cheaper nib. Um, I had no issues with flow, no issues with um, with anything regarding these pins. Uh, they stop and start as normal. They write right away. There's no hard starting. Um, I'm looking at the sheet that I wrote right before we started this, but um, yeah, no issues with this pen at all. They come only in a medium nib, so hopefully you like medium. I did, um, the, the hooded nib came in a fine, so I did kind of show you both in the writing sample that I did, so you can see the medium versus the fine nib. I did prefer the feel of the fine in this specific brand. I can't really tell you why other than it just was a very crisp, clean line. Um, the feed keeps up very well in both the pins, but I just, for whatever reason, preferred the fine nib um, in the hooded nib, which I'm going to show you in another review coming up um, next week. So anyway, uh, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Um, but otherwise, this is the Dryden Designs Luxury Fountain Pen. I wish it had a different name a model name than their other luxury fountain pen like one would be hooded one not but they're just if you search on like Amazon for Dryden Designs uh, luxury fountain pen you'll find both and you can kind of choose which one you want after listening or watching the next review that I do on the hooded nib as well so anyway let's take a look at the writing sample next all right we're here to do the writing sample of the Dryden Designs luxury fountain pen series they gave me three pens, two of these um, over here are the same exact pen, just one's in black and one's in silver, depending on your preference. I also have the Dryden Designs Luxury Fountain Pen that comes with a ballpoint that we just reviewed and a refill in this nice gift box here. Um, I've already done writing samples of, of both just so that I could photograph them for the website, uh, bestfountainpen.com, but I'm also going to do one as you watch because some people like to listen to the sound of the nib write. I guess um, when you turn up your volume, some people can hear if they think it's scratchy or not, but I would be honest with you and tell you. I'm really sorry about my hands. I've been having a lot of fun with fountain pens uh, this morning, so they're really ink stained black everywhere. But um, it's no reflection on this pen at all. These pens are great fun, great um, cheaper nibs. They're, I kind of went over that, I guess, in the fountain pen review, but great cheaper nibs with no issues hard starting or stopping. Um, the two here, both came to me in a medium nib. That's all you can buy them on, on Amazon. There'll be a link in the um, description below, but you can just buy them only in a medium nib. The Executive Series Luxury Fountain Pen comes in a fine. Um, just I'll show you both here in the same writing sample and then I'll cut them both together in the review. I myself prefer the fine nib on this hooded nib Executive Series Fountain Pen. I can't exactly tell you why, I don't know, just the feel of it. I just really like how it's a solid, crisp, fine line and there's no, um, it's not that anything's bad with the medium, I just really do prefer the fine, but that's a personal preference. Obviously some people would really prefer a broad nib, but they don't offer that currently. So I want to show you how both of them write. So we're going to, I'm not going to do all three, there's really no point because these two are exactly the same nibs, but I am going to start with the Dryden Designs Luxury Fountain Pen. Again, it doesn't post, so we're not gonna try that. So let's just show, I'm gonna be silent during the writing so that you can kind of uh, listen for those of you who like to listen. All right, so that is the Dryden Designs Luxury Fountain Pen. I'm gonna move the camera just a little bit because I could sense there was some shake there because it's touching, the tripod's touching the table. So I'm just gonna kick it off the table just a touch before we start the next review. Okay, so now we're gonna start with the Dryden Designs um, Luxury Fountain Pen. I'm just calling it the Executive because it just, I don't know, looks a little more. It is a little um, heavier than the other. Uh, in terms of like if you're trying to decide which one you want, it's definitely the metal bodied fountain pen that's a little bit heavier. But let's go over 
how this guy writes and it does post which I really love so it posts very securely on the back So I really love this pen. I love this nib, I love the price point, I love everything about the Dryden Designs uh, Luxury Fine Nib. So please check it out, there'll be a link in the description below. Um, this pen right now, at least as of the time of this review, is running less than $15. Excellent value, um, great looking pens as well. So whether you like the medium or whether you like the fine nib, uh, be sure to try one of them, you won't regret it. Thanks for watching Best Fountain Pen.